Hi everyone, in this video we're going to start learning about dynamic memory allocation in C. So to start off, we're actually going to review pointers and what we know about them. So I'm just going to take a look at pointer example.c. So in this program, we have an example of using pointers so that we can pass in the memory address of variables that we would like to assign values to, and we can assign those inside a function, and then we can think of returning two values even though we actually don't return anything with our function, but we do assign their values inside, so this is passing by reference. So this program is mostly written for us, but we have a th few things to um, fill in. So here we have two variables um, representing the quotient and the remainder um, for an operation that we're going to perform. And I'd like to note that quote and rem are ints. They're not pointers, right? They're not pointers to ints. Um, they are ints. And what we want to do is we want to call a function um, that we're going to define that's called long division, and it's going to take in um, a dividend and a divisor. So for example, we're going to call it on 40 as our dividend and 3 as our divisor. And we would like to assign this int quote uh, to have the value that's the quotient. And so if we do 40 divided by 3, we also call this integer division sometimes, um, we should get 13 back because 3 goes into 40 13 times. So we'd call that um, the quotient. Um, 40, uh, divided by 3 int would give quote equals 13 and the remainder is going to be what's left after that um, we take out 13 threes. Well what's left after we've taken out 13 threes that's 39 so one is left so we'd say one would be the re remainder. So the remainder would be, should be one. And C has built-in functions to calculate these, but if we want to do this inside a function away from our main, we're going to need to pass um, in pointers to uh, quote and rem. And the way, so when we're using pointers in this way, we're going to have to use the address of operator in order to pass them in. So when I call long division, I need to pass in um, the way I've de defined it here. I have my dividend, so for example, that's 40. I have my divisor, uh, for example, that's three. And then I need to pass in a pointer to the thing where I want to put my quotient. And so the Operator for that is the address of operator, which is an ampersand. So I would pass in ampersand quote, which means a pointer to this integer. And I would also pass in a pointer to my variable that's holding my remainder. And again, I use my address of operator. So that's how I would call it. So that's a reminder of our address of operator. And then now, inside my function down here, so this is my function definition, up here I had my function prototype, my function declaration I could also say. So all I want to do here is set whatever quotient, quotient p points to, and I also need to set whatever remainder p points to. And in particular, I need to set them to um, 
these this quotient value and this remainder value. But how do I set what quotient p points to? I use the dereferencing or indirection operator, which is the asterisk. So I say whatever this points, whatever quotient p points to, go to that thing and assign it to be um, dividend. Oh, I keep spelling that with the T. Dividend divided by divisor. And similarly, whatever remainder P points to, I need to set that to be dividend, and then this is our remainder operator, remainder divisor. And so we can check our work. Let's see here. Okay, every time I just put it with the T instead of D. Okay, and we can check our work because we have this nice print function. So let's go ahead and check it. We need to compile. Let's call it, again, just pointer example. We want all the warnings. And it's example.c. Oh, pointer example.c. And now we'll run it. And as we predicted, we got the right answer. So the point of this was just to remember one way that we use pointers before we move on to uh, another way that we're gonna use pointers, which is to dynamically allocate memory. So next, let's take a look at the other file that we have here, which is dynamicmem.c. And so we've got a lot going on in this program, but Basically, uh, what we're going to need to do here is we need to write a program to read in a string um, and create an array of integers allocating memory dynamically. So we don't know how big the string will be or how big the array will be beforehand. So, so far in all of the programs and labs and any uh, little assignment we've had, we've always assumed a max length on, say, our strings or on our arrays. But if we don't want to assume that, that is when we're going to need to use dynamic memory allocation. So we do that first off by using pointers. So we can remember that in C, pointers and Arrays are equivalent. Um, although I guess we actually have a, our second example is an array as well. But that's always just a good thing to remember. But I'll actually delete it because I think it's not necessary here. So we've got our pointers here. And then we also have um, integers to hold sizes that we get from the user, right? Um, so we're gonna ask our user uh, for these sizes and then we're gonna use them to dynamically allocate the exact right amount of, of memory. Okay, so overall we'll show how that's done. So let's say I first ask the user to for uh, both a string length and a string. So I give them this prompt. Now I'm going to, I guess, here, how am I gonna get that length? Well, I just use scanf. And so the length is an integer and we want to assign it to string size. And so again, just practicing our understanding of pointers, um, we need to pass a pointer to string size into this, and we do that using the ampersand, um, the address of operator. So I'm going to pass in the address of string size. That's great. And now, this is the exciting part, we are going to say that string one, this is how I'm going to allocate the memory. So String one is a pointer, and I want to make it point to um, something 
that can hold um, just the right number of characters, right? And so how I do that is I first off, I can use a function called calc, and it's going to take in two parameters. The first parameter is going to be um, the number of things, so that's going to be what string size. And the second parameter is the size of the things that I want to allocate. So what I would pass in here is just going to be the size of a character because I need, so say the user passes in four, I need four chunks of memory, each of which can hold a character. And so we all just put this up here, oops, right here. I'll say calic takes in, the calic inputs are number of, we could call them memory cells, and then size of each cell. And now string one points to, there's, there's memory reserved, just the right amount that I need. And so, now I can actually get this string. Oh wait, oh, excuse me, I haven't done it yet. So now I still have, my user is still gonna enter me another thing, um, which is the string. And now I can just simply pass in, I want a pointer to the string, but string one is already a pointer. And so that's gonna work out well for me. And when I do a write, I see that, oh, um, I don't have calic yet, and that's because I haven't included the standard library. So I'll do that, because um, that's where both calic and, excuse me, that's where calic and malloc are, and it's standard library.h. And there we go. Okay. So, We could try running this at this point. I'm not sure. Um, we might get, it might not work because we haven't done the rest of the program yet, but I always like to run as soon as possible. So, um, okay. We're getting some warnings, but that's just in the part of the program that we haven't worked on yet. So let's try it. So let's say my string length is four and I enter dogs as my string, and it looks like it works. So that's great. And so you'll notice that when I actually, the syntax that I used to get this string is the same as it would be if I had, instead of using dynamic memory allocation, if I had done something like um, declared this as an array, but then I would have needed to put some like max string size, right? Like we've done in previous pro programs. And then maybe I would need to keep track of size of string. And then I would only, if I ever needed that size of string, I'd have it, but I would have allocated when we, when I run this, this declaration here, I allocate however many cells max string size does, uh, whatever max string size was, and I'd probably have to make that too big. And so by just dynamically allocating my memory, I'm saving myself from that. But once I'm down here, once the memory is allocated, I can actually use the same syntax to work with this string as I was before. Okay. So now let's see another example. So we saw calic. Oh, actually, we're not done yet. So a really important thing that I almost forgot. So what does calic output? So well, I'll say returns in particular. So I actually, my program 
is it's working, but I would say it's not quite correct at this point because calic is returns us a pointer, but it's actually a void pointer. Um, but we don't want string one to be a void pointer. We want it to be a pointer to a char. So I need to cast it. And we can recall that to cast, we um, put the thing we want to cast to inside parentheses like this. And then that's going to apply to this thing over here. I probably don't need the parentheses, but um, we can now see that I'm casting this entire thing to um, be a pointer to a char instead of a null pointer or a void pointer, which I don't want. All right, so now let's look at our second example where we want to create an array. Um, so first off, we're going to get the number of numbers from the user. So again, we've got scanf, we need an integer, and we need to pass in the address of the integer that we're going to hold that in. And then again, so I've got my array of nums, and I want to assign that to, first off, I know I'm going to have to cast it to an int, a uh, pointer to an int. So array of nums is going to point to the front of my array. Um, and that the front of my array is an int, as are all elements of it. And then now I'm going to use a very similar function to what we saw before, but this one's called malloc. And malloc, malloc input is just the total number of, um, I guess it's bytes. And that, what is that? That's the um, number of cells times the size of each cell. So you can see that malloc and calloc, at least for our purposes, um, we can really just choose one and stick with it if we want. Or you can use inter use them interchangeably. It's basically, do you multiply these things, these two things, or do you just pass them in each in separately? So we're going to have to multiply them when we use malloc. So we're going to do, let's see, we have number of nums. That's our number of cells. And then the size of each cell is going to be a size of an int, because it's an array of ints. And then at this point, let's just create some array. Um, I'll just do what the example in the book does. Uh, it makes, it sets the first element to five, and then for each um, element one through however many the max that we're going to get to is, which will be one fewer than num nums, um, it, in this example, it sets array of nums at i to whatever was before array of nums at i minus 1, and then it multiplies it by i. That's just what they do here. What? Oh, array of nums. Okay. And then we just have some printing here to make sure that we know what's going on. So let's try this one more time. So 
So we can do a different string. Oh, the book's example was, it's gonna be length of nine, and it's gonna be the word enormous. Does that really have nine characters? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, hmm, I wonder if there's no, when I did four, I wonder if there's no end of, um, end of string character. One, two, three, oh God. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, so uh, my guess is that in the book example, which I didn't pick up on before I uh, talked through this, my guess is that um, that nine is for the end of string character. And so maybe to make this more user friendly, we would just add one to whatever they they entered, but that's fine. And then let's say I want my array to be uh, size 10. And so now we were just taking the one before and multiplying by i, so first one was five. Okay, take the one before and multiply by one, you get five. Take the one before and multiply by two, you get 10, etc. So it looks like we are successfully um, running our program. And then finally, so I guess one thing I'll note is that these variables, all of the above variables are stored, we'll say, on the stack. So basically there's one area of memory that's called the stack, um, and all of these variables are stored here, but this memory is allocated in a different place that's called the heap. And the heap is a place that when we allocate memory, uh, that's where we allocate it. I'll put this right here on the heap. And one special thing about the heap is that we can actually, we can direct C to free that memory so that it can be used again. So you can imagine whatever memory I allocate for, say, string size, or even for this pointer, which holds the memory address, right? The pointer holds a memory address. Um, I can change it. I could use it for something different later, but I can't free it. I can't allow it to be used for another variable. But that that same memory cell but with memory on the heap i can do that and all i do is i pass in the pointer to the memory that i want to free so i believe what was my first my first um pointer that i was working with was string one all i do is i pass in the pointer and my second pointer I was working with was array of gnomes. And so this is how I free that memory. And in our little programs, it's not going to, we're not going to see an error when we compile or an error at runtime when, if we don't do this. Um, the issue would be in a long running program, um, we might run out of memory. Uh, so it's just good to learn about, um, and I also linked on, will link on this uh, page here, the another video that shows you how to, um, when you're working with dynamic memory, how to debug it using this tool called Valgrind that already exists on the server, um, and there you'll see that that debugger will find places that you don't free memory that you should have. So we already saw, we ran this program before we called free and we didn't see any compiler error or any runtime error. 
but uh, Valgrind would find that for us. But just to prove that that still works, even after we've done it, let's run it. Okay, so now we know that we really needed five for dogs, and let's say we wanted 12 numbers, are getting really big. Um, so that is how we use malloc and calloc and free to allocate and then free memory.